I've seen plenty of videos that show Stirling engines running uh, but very few that actually shows you what's going on and some of the features that help to make it work. This is uh, a little unit that I made out of my junk box and I'm not saying it's a perfect design, it's simply a design uh, that has run. The top and bottom plates are made out of copper probably about one and a half millimeters thick and they're held together uh, with this spring arrangement which just holds the two plates together. The expansion chamber is uh, a cardboard tube and it's the middle of a roll of masking tape not unlike this one just a wider tape. This engine produces very little power and in order for it to run at all I had to overcome the issues of friction and with this flywheel I've found that if it'll turn for three or four turns um, without stopping in the same place twice then it suggests that the balance is good and the friction is not too much. The flywheel is a piece of copper that I've uh, simply soldered on a brass boss and given myself a, a couple of fixing bolts. It doesn't have to be round uh, so long as it's reasonably balanced. Rather than spending a lot of time trying to balance the flywheel I've compensated for the weight of the piston with this spring. It's just a little clock spring that is just sufficient to lift the weight of the power piston. The spring has just been fixed to a stud just to hold it and then the other end is clipped onto the connecting rod. To make things easy for myself I've connected the power piston to the crankshaft with a small terminal uh, block, it's just a twin terminal block that I've cut in half. The power piston is made from a nylon insulator. Uh, the, the cylinder is 25 millimeter internal diameter copper tube and the nylon piston was a little bit loose the fit in there was too loose and was not gas tight so I've actually wrapped uh, some sellotape around the piston to just to help give me a gas seal it's a nice hard surface I've oiled it and you'll see that it, it just slots in and will just drop down under its own weight um, and that seems to be about the sort of fit you want. If it's looser than that you'll lose uh, gas or, or air and if it's too tight then you won't develop enough pressure to move it. These springs are just to hold the top and bottom plates together. Um, I've sealed the uh, cardboard tube to the plates with masking tape but uh, I found when it got a bit hot uh, I couldn't hold the little bit of pressure in and these springs uh, simply hold the plates together and uh, the masking tape is doing the rest of the job. And that's my displacer. It's actually made out of cardboard. Uh, so that you can see what's going on here I'm going to cut off the displacer as I say this is just a cardboard tube or a, a little cardboard cylinder cornflake packet and uh, inside this device is just used to pull the displacer up and down 
uh, rather than having copper on the outside which would have taken up space so I've arranged to hold it effectively on the inside. The displacer moves up and down the chamber. Uh, the throw of the crank is such that I use up all of the available space. You'll see that there's probably about uh, four millimeters uh, clearance, so a couple of millimeters uh, all round. And uh, say so that's just a uh, a piece of uh, cardboard tubing. The displacer conrod is this piece of copper wire which I've just cut off. Uh, it passes through a uh, brass stud that's got a hole in it and uh, the stud is fixed with a brass nut that's soldered to this plate. Uh, the hole for the uh, wire needs to be such that the wire is a loose fit um, but not so loose as to let too much uh, pressurised air escape when the engine's running. So just a bit of copper wire there. Uh, the crank is a piece of coat hanger material and uh, I've soldered some nuts on to stop it from moving around and I've also soldered on some nuts to stop the conrods from moving around and the conrods themselves uh, have some nuts that have been drilled to clear the wire and they just freely move and the crank of course is uh, 90 degrees out of phase so uh, the uh, piston always follows the displacer so as the displacer goes up then the piston comes up 90 degrees later so that's the uh, that's the engine uh, in pieces uh, it's very simple um, I have no designs for this I've built it from just looking at what other people seem to be doing but having built this now I understand enough to go about making um, uh, probably a more efficient engine uh, thank you for watching I hope it's been of uh, interest and some help to you To help me with my experimenting with this engine, I've made uh, another little uh, piston and uh, bore arrangement, again using uh, a nylon insulator and a piece of tube. I have run this piston, I had to put sellotape around it again to, to make it gas tight, and I've run it in this arrangement and I've simply packed the area between the, the large uh, cylinder and the small cylinder with tissue paper and uh, to hold the uh, piston and cylinder in place and it has allowed me to uh, use this engine to experiment with.